If you would have told me a few years ago that Robert Pattinson would be one of my favorite actors, I probably wouldn't have believed you. The guy from Twilight? Despite kicking off his career with another highly popular franchise, this strapping young lad must be Cedric, am I right? Yes, sir. Pattinson is without a doubt best known for the Twilight Saga and was therefore labeled a bad actor as per custom. Robert Pattinson is not a good actor. He wasn't a good actor at school. He's not a good actor now. While the Twilight films were very successful, they were on the butt end of countless jokes, even in other movies. I really went to see the new Twilight movie by myself. And it was so bad. In between and after the Twilight films, Pattinson made a conscious effort to take on smaller, more cinematic films. Working with acclaimed filmmakers like Werner Herzog and David Cronenberg, Pattinson has distanced himself from franchise filmmaking. Why not another blockbuster? Why do you like the small stuff? I've had the luxury of kind of not having to keep working constantly, and so I've kind of been able to choose what I wanted to do, and it's just kind of been what I wanted to do. In gravitating towards these more artful films, Pattinson has broken out of the charming, proper character molds that he has been best known for. While the Twilight films sort of forced Pattinson into an acting corner, I never really quite knew how to how to play a vampire. No, I sort of, I just sort of, I just sort of played this sort of pale, pale person. Other films have allowed him to spread his wings and show a full range of what he can really do as an actor. I don't want your love. I've never loved you. Your smell it turns my stomach because you smell of him. You filthy husband. One thing that I think often goes overlooked about Pattinson's acting is how extremely well he pulls off various accents. Having a natural British accent, Pattinson is able to seamlessly strip himself of it to fit into his roles. Yes, yeah, stockpiling of dead rats called global health menace. But the most interesting cases of it are when Pattinson has to recreate a distinctive accent. In The Rover, Pattinson's dry southern twang makes his voice virtually beyond recognition. Cause that's that lady to get the car alone from there. I was gonna do that anyway, and you would have you heard me, and you would have asked her what I said, and figured out what I, said, what I said anyway, and I was gonna tell you anyway. And in good time, Pattinson pulls off a stunningly well crafted urban Queens accent that greatly enhances the energy and charisma of the film. You, Peter? Yes, I am. We're in the middle of saying. Hello. Nick, what, what are you doing? We're in the middle of something here. We're in the Come middle on, of the exam. Hey, 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 Nick, about Nick. The stuff and the, the pan and the wait, chicken. Wait, 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 please. Nick. How would you like it if I made you cry? How would you like that? No, I would not. But on, get up. They, they told me I had to do this stuff. Let's go. I, Let's go. Good Time is by far my favorite of Pattinson's performances. Not only do I believe it to be his best performance, but I find it fascinating that Pattinson actually sought out the Safdie brothers and they wrote the film around him. Pattinson realized that his last few roles were rather static and reactive, so he wanted to push himself to do something more frenetic and transformative. Though there's no heavy makeup or prosthetics involved, Pattinson disappears into the role, becoming almost unrecognizable and definitely a far cry from Edward Cullen. You don't know what I'm talking about at all. Though it looked like Robert Pattinson would be doomed as the poster boy for young adult franchises, he seems to have really found his calling with unique, more stylish films. Here's to hoping that he stays out of the shadows.